This is gonna be a detailed tutorial on how to use updaters within Manum. So firstly, uh, we're gonna import some stuff from Manum and we're also gonna import from random. This is just for our last animation here, right? Now, I'm just gonna start off with a little kind of primer as to what we've done before. So I'm gonna call it old one here where we'd add a box, we'd add some text and we'd add an update to the text if we want it to stay in the center of the box as the box is moving around, right? So we've got the box with its stuff, we've got the text and then we add the updater, keep it in the center, we add it and when we animate the box around and move it around and all sorts of things, it'll stay within the center. Okay, but notice if I scale the box, the scaling of the text is not going to be considered. It's only gonna stay within the center. So if I made it too small, then the text would be like outside of the box, right? I can clear updaters and then I can play that box around moving again and you'll see that there is no updater applied there. So we've already seen something like that. Uh, similarly, we have got old two, we're in everything else staying the same, right? So we get our box, we got the text, except here we've got always redraw instead of add updater. Same thing again, right? You notice the same thing, the scaling, not much changes there. Uh, and when I clear the updaters, uh, everything will uh, play out nicely, right? So we've seen this before. If we want to add an updater, you can add an updater. If you want to clear it, you can clear it. My go-to is always redraw because I kind of like to just do everything at once in one line of code, but you know, each of your own. So here's onto our new section here, right? Where instead of just typing out all that stuff within the scene, if I know what I want it to look like and I want these things to move around and stay in sync, like if I wanna create a model of something, then I'll create that as a function. So I'm just gonna, I'm just calling this get helper function and it's gonna input a color if I wanna change the color of this stuff. Now you'll see everything's a vector group and that's what I return, like I would if I'm trying to create some stuff. I've got the box, I've got the text. Now notice you don't need to add updaters when you're creating a function because this get helper function will always keep the text within the center of the box. As you move this, this thing around, this, this whole result around, everything will just move in sync, right? It'll move as one object rather than the box moving. So, if, you know, that's a nice little option that you could do there. Now you'll notice if you code it like this, it'll render way faster, like noticeably faster, okay? So I get my stuff which is my helper function, the color is blue because that's really just the fill color of the, uh, of the box, right? Create it, animate it so I can scale it, I can make it bigger and you'll notice that the text also gets bigger as well because everything in stuff, which is the box and the text is being changed. And if I just wanted to move the box, right? Notice I've got stuff and I'm accessing the first element of it. So within stuff, well within stuff, it is the vector group of this here. So if I wanted to move around the text, I'd access it by stuff and the first element of it rather than the zeroth element because the box is the zeroth element and the text would be the first element. So you can totally do that. That's just leveraging the fact that we're using Python to code everything out here. And that's how Python will interpret your functions and how you've added everything together. It's just arrays. Okay, and now we're onto something which is relatively new. This is the more detailed part, which is you can add an updater function and apply that to animations if you want things to change like instantaneously, right? Like 60 frames per second if you're rendering at high quality. And you'll notice that within three blue, one brown videos, he does this quite frequently because this is how you get things to move around really, really nicely. So firstly, I, I just wanna have a coin flipping heads or tails and to give it that effect that it is flipping around. So firstly, I need to get a coin, okay? It's a vector group of stuff, but the coin is dependent on a 50-50 event. So I access by random uniform and that's why at the very top of the code, I had import random and this is just going to access a random number between zero and one. Uniform is uniformly distributed. Right, you know, there's it, there's no bias. There's no, there's, it's not like it's gonna pick something from the center more likely like it would with a normal distribution. It's uniformly distributed. Where if it's less than 0 0.5, so 50% of the time, give me a circle 
set it to be red and put a T in the middle of that, as if like it's a tails. Otherwise, make it a blue circle and give me a heads. And then return that result. Okay, you'll see I've added the text, or I've actually, <laughs> I've done that twice. I don't need to do that. I only need to do that once. Result dot add C and text. Okay, so that's just gonna give me the coin. That's not animating anything yet. This is my animator function here. Okay, this is my update animator. Similar thing, it takes in a coin. So when you create a coin, throw that in and it'll animate it. Now what this is gonna do, it's gonna pick a random number, again, between zero and one, because a 50-50 event. Result is our vector group. If it is less than 0 0.5, give me that. Otherwise, give me that. So it's the same as before. Give me that heads or tails. But then you'll notice here what I've got is P and K for shifting the coin up and left. And it's just by some tiny, tiny, tiny little nudge. Now, let me explain what's going on here. What this is going to do is it's going to consider our coin being flipped. And as we, well, let's have a look at how this, how this comes out. We add the coin, right? It's always redraw, get coin, update from funk, go coin and animate the coin for two seconds. Now what this is going to do, every single frame per second. So this is going to happen 60 times per one second if you're rendering at 60 frames per second. What it's gonna do is it's gonna pick a random number for this one frame, dependent on what the random number is, will tell us if we've got a heads or a tails, and then we're gonna shift the coin up or down or left or right by the tiniest nudge. And then we're gonna do that again, and again, and again, and again, and again, 60 times per one second, and I want this to have a runtime of two seconds, so it's gonna give the illusion of like about 120 flips of the coin. Now, if you can wrap your head around update of functions, you can like, the really the creativity is endless because you can make things move around and animate on the screen and you can, you can do all sorts of cool stuff uh, if you can come up with your updater function.